The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 23rd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-664. If you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question in in our Tigers, then well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Slightly mixed bag out here. The Dow off just slightly down about five points. The s and is up three. NASDAQ 108, Russell 11, Semi 17, Trandy's 48, Gold's up five bucks, silver 24 cents, Lights we crude up 48 pennies, leading the charge dollar wise, the upside Tesla. Tesla taking out a B point today, doing it with volume. In fact, if we just go take a look at that pattern out here. Here's the daily time frame chart. The B point is the trading session of May 28th. That had volume of 22.7 million shares. You're already at 20 million shares as we speak right now. So Tesla getting for the 659.83 level, uh, perhaps five or 683.93. That's 1.272 expansion, maybe up 714.59. Tesla also found support at the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. And with price being above the top of the center of that profile, folks, that suggests that Tesla wants to make a move to 757.41. That's the top of that weekly box out there. We've got a caller on the line, and we've got call ahead seating. So let's go out to uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. Thank you very much for taking the call. I hope you're doing well. My pleasure. Yes, I am. And uh, Tilray, T L R Y, is the oops, is the uh, shoot. Uh, fat fingers got the wrong symbol on my white background charts, but let me get them going here. So, Brent, tell us what you're doing and how I can best help you with Tilray. I took a shot at this. Uh, I think it's right about where it's trading, 1760. And I had yesterday as bar eight in the TV count. And then today could be either nine or could be one if it's. I, I, anything above 1747 would be the start of the count the other direction. So I just wanted to get your thoughts. I know it's, I believe it's below the OUL and it is red. It's right, I mean, it it's is. very close to being at the zero level, but it's, I think that's the case with that. And so I just want to get your thoughts. You know, Absolutely. Some level to be watching it upside. I, I guess, of course, the first one would be that OUL to get above that. Sure. So first, a couple. Well, one, one housekeeping thing here, and sometimes different systems generate uh, different bar data. Uh, so you might want to uh, uh, just check this out. I actually have that today could become bar number eight. Right now, it wouldn't. It would be negated because of where it's trading relationship to bar number four. But the day's not over. So I had bar seven yesterday. Bar now. Let me just just to make sure. Because could it be my? Let me just uh, update all my historical. Reload all historical. Uh, it could take a while. I shouldn't have done it on this screen. But but let's uh, 
Yeah, so it, it just came back. So I don't know why ours, because I know you're very good at this, but my system is showing that the low from a couple of days ago was bar number six. So you might want to just take a look at that. Now, based upon that, let's just go with my readings at this stage here. We did see that the oscillator and change line a couple of days ago changed from green to red. We know when that happens, there's a phenomenon associated with that, folks, and that is that price over the coming sessions. In this case here, it basically took two sessions for price and that oscillator and change line to catch up to each other. Now, it's all going to be dependent upon the closing. A test and rejection of a red oscillator and change line after it turned green would be bearish. Um, so now we've got really multiple signals here. Uh, but, but that signal would be bearish. Now that bearish signal would say, hey, look, I go down and test support. Well, support is between 15, is either 1507, 1578, or 1719. 1578 and 1719 are the bottom and center of its bullish structured profile. Typically, Brent, when you trade above the center of a bull structure profile, as it did yesterday and the day before and is today, that tells you that price wants to make a run for 2002. So, you know, you've got multiple signals here. Uh, I don't want to confuse you, but sometimes the signals that get generated for us are, in fact, um, confusing or, or offer, you know, different messages out here. Uh, so on the daily chart, before I go any further, any questions about that so far? No, it's pretty clear. It's, it's, you know, it's a little, you know, maybe not the cleanest looking entry I might normally do, but I, I thought there's enough there. I had some early indicators that showed potential for it starting to, to turn upward, so that's why I, I took a shot at it. And, sure, sure. And, uh, there was enough nope. there I thought it was worth trying anyways. We'll see how it works out. No, look, look, absolutely. So, you know, if we just simply look at, I mean, let's just look into the short-term time frame charts, trying to find some kind of a uh, bottom signal out here, just you know, associated with the patterns that that uh, that I like to uh, take a look at in trade. And I, and I just don't have anything out here. That doesn't mean uh, that doesn't mean that it hasn't bottomed. It's just the patterns that uh, that you had called about the TD nine count pattern. We wanted to clarify that. Now, it would be ideal for me. I'd love for this. I know you wouldn't, so I'm not going to pull for this, but I'd love for this thing today, tomorrow, or the next day to shoot down below the uh, low of 1632 and not close below 1507 uh, to generate a nice TD nine count uh, bottom uh, pattern out there because the breakout level is 1507, which held. So just watch that 1791 area. On the 15-minute time frame chart, you're actually in bar number nine right now. So this says that by 115 or possibly by 130 uh, on a 15-minute basis, that should be a bottom. And if not, and a price goes, goes below that, that would tell us that uh, Tilray would pull back to 1710. That is the breakout level uh, on a 15-minute basis. Now, I don't know if you really use 15-minute time frame charts, but just to give you the play-by-play, uh, -play, up-to-date scenario, that's what we'd be looking at, Brent. Okay? No, I appreciate it. This is just a trade. We'll see how it works out. And I just did uh, call options on that. We'll find out how it, how it works. But All right. I appreciate well, your help, Steve, very much, as always. Just have you a bet. great rest of your week and enjoy your weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. That was Brent in Martinez, California. We had a question that came in as we were coming on to the air, and it was from John in uh, the Tiger's Den. John is asking about the NDX 100. So we're about that five seconds away from going into the uh, breakout here. So we get back out. Let me just punch the, uh, the NDX 100 chart up on my screen. John's specific question is, and this way you guys can answer it as well, do the TD9s on a daily say anything about the NDX X 100 chart and here's the hint here's here is the TD nine count top well I, I can't draw the line that quickly I don't think it's right here on this bar so to answer John's question in the den do the TD nines tell us anything about the NDX 100 we'll be right back to answer that Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago and the student has now become the master Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Each year. Hello, hello. Ah, oh, there we go. Hello, hello, hello. Anybody in the den, if you can hear me, that'd be great. Production room. I'm going to go with you can hear me. Okay, Mr. Bill. Well, I'm going to keep going here. I don't uh, know what's going on, but uh, uh, the fact that you can hear me, that's great. So uh, the chart that's on my screen right now. Uh, so first I was asking the question about this chart here on the NDX 100. Let's answer John's question specifically. And then we'll come back and take a look at the NDX 100, and we'll look at multiple time frames. So his question specifically, do the TD9s tell us anything about the NDX 100? And in fact, they do. If you take a look at the TD9 count, let me get my crosshair out here. It was a TD9 count top that formed right here. The day was June 17th. That was the high of the pattern. Those highs need to take place on bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9. Now, when price exceeds that, which it uh, did yesterday, in fact, from that nine count, all price did was pulled back and tested support. Where is support? It's that oscillator and change line. That was the reason that that was developed out here. So price was just pulling back, testing support, nothing broken, and yesterday price closes above it. So what that does is that sets up from a TD9 count standpoint, says you get a strong momentum move to the upside. That's not the only topping pattern that you and I take a look at. We also take a look at wave number seven of the Chapman wave. Well, we happen to be in wave number seven, that's letter G. Or than wave number seven or wave number three, depending on how the accounts uh, uh, take off. But if it is wave number seven, which as long as we continue to make higher highs, that just extends itself. But so it's a potential for a topping signal out here. Same pattern applies. Any pullback is going to have to close below the oscillator and change line in the NDX 100 for it to mean anything. 
So first, that's what we're taking a look at. We take a look at the daily time frame. I assume it was the daily time frame that you were, yeah, you, you asked about the daily for the NDX 100. Well, what else do we know about the NDX 100? We know that it's in an A to B equals CD to the upside. And we ha now have the pattern drawn in. You're going to use for your A point down at March 5th. That's your low. Your B point's going to be the high from April 29th. And your C point's going to be the low from May the 12th. The one-to-one -one price projection of this A to B equals CD pattern is at 14,832. So you're in wave number seven. That's the only topping signal we have inside the NDX 100. As it's also approaching the 1.272 expansion of the swing point, the high of February 16th, down to the low of March 5th. So ordinarily, this would be a spot where you would see a stalling out, just a Fibonacci expansion level. You may. You, you doesn't have to. Uh, but if price does get above that 14,334, it just adds to the evidence of, yeah, I want to go at least make that one-to-one -one move, 14,832. Now, if you take a look at the QQQ ETF, what we know is that the swing point was taken out with volume. The swing point from April 29th had 37 million shares. Shoot, that was taken out back on June 1st with 59 million shares. Yesterday was uh, 28 million shares. doesn't really matter. So it has been taken out with volume. Price is above the top of its profile out there. And the Qs, the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD to the upside, is 361.35. And the 1 to 1.272, 373.69. So that's currently the messages from the Qs. There's other messages as well. So as long as we're talking about the cues and it's really important so john i'm glad that you asked the question about the cues it's really important because the cues or the ndx 100 does not have a topping pattern granted i did say it is in wave number seven so there is a signal that's out there just hasn't been confirmed just yet now what we're doing is switching over and taking a look at multiple time frames if you take a look at the three month time frame or the quarterly time frame i should say quarterly time frame has this in bar number four uh, so price should continue moving higher it also shows wave number seven out here uh, so we'll keep an eye on that but no real topping pattern in place just yet the same is true for the monthly time frame chart in fact the monthly time frame chart three months ago two months ago took out its td9 count top yeah, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy, but there's been no bearish reversal candles. Price hasn't closed below the oscillator and change line in God knows how long. Uh, really was uh, back in March of 2020 was the only close that we saw below that recently out here. So on the monthly basis, the NDX 100 remains strong like bull. It kind of adding to the scenario of no crash in sight, folks. The signals and the patterns are not present among the indices as we speak right now. That's as of uh, June the 23rd. That could always change, but right now we're going with the data that we've got. Here's the weekly time frame. The weekly time frame has got no topping signal at all in place out here, at least the topping signals that I or patterns that I look for. Uh, this has already taken out a potential wave number seven. Uh, so the weekly chart says strong like bull. The daily we've already covered. And then you go to the intraday time frame charts. In order for the NDX 100 to signal any possible change in trend, price would have to take out its first key level of support. And on a 30 minute time frame, that is at 14,128. On a 65 minute, it's 14071. On 130 minute, it's 13756. And it's 1316, 13613 on 195 minute. Each of those intraday time frames, folks, do not have topping patterns in play. So that is a thorough review of the NDX 100. So therefore, let's summarize it. The only topping signal right now is wave number seven on a daily basis. And if that wave number seven takes hold, then the levels that you would be looking for at this stage here is 14,125 or thereabouts. That's the oscillator and change line. That is where price should find support. And if it doesn't find support, then we've got to go back to the drawing board and take a look and see what other signal or support or resistance information is out out there. So, John, I hope that answers your question with regard to the NDX 100. Let's go to uh, Boston Dan. And Boston Dan wants to take a look at uh, BEST. B E S T is the uh, ticker symbol. So, let me uh, switch. Oh, I've got to do a bunch of work here. Let me switch screens, Dan, because we're not going to look at. Uh, well, actually, now that I take that back, oh, no. Let's go back to that screen. Let's do Dan a uh, favor out here. And the favor is going to be, let me get to the charts 
And we're going to do the same thing we did for the NDX 100. That's okay with you, Dan. We're going to do the same thing for this tickle symbol, AQST. In this case, you're going to get monthly, or you're going to get monthly, you're going to get quarterly, you're going to get weekly, you're going to get daily, you're going to get the whole kit and caboodle out there. At no extra charge, by the way. So we're going to take a look at, uh, oh, why did I put AQST? Who wanted that? Uh, can you please take a look at best? Oh, and AQST. Well, hey, we got the AQST, so now we're in on AQST. We're going to do both of them for you. So here's what we know about AQST. Right now today, it is uh, trading right into a key level of resistance. That's at $4.25. That 425 was established by the TD9 breakdown level. As I expand the daily time frame chart out here, the one thing I do know, there are a lot of smart traders inside the Tiger's Den and listening in. And there's not a single one of us, and that's including me, that would have chosen 534, or I'm sorry, 425, or 534 that is, but certainly 425 as the breakdown level. Just doesn't happen. That's the power of these TD9s out here. You can see how price got up here a couple different times, June 11th, June the 14th, and was unable to take out that level. So Dano... That's a real key area. 425, you're trading at 423. A close above it, and you know how this goes, two consecutive closes above it would then suggest to move up to the 534 level. 534 it would be the next TD9 breakdown area. That's the message from the daily time frame. The weekly time frame out here, what do we have? Not much. So there's nothing there to really assist us. Price above the oscillator and change line, but otherwise not, uh, not much out there. On the 195-minute chart, there was a TD9 count pattern. Let's just expand this out. Like all topping signals, all they really entitle you to do is pull back to support. That's all it did. It was testing the support of its daily profile. Here it says a close above 430. You are moving to the upside. In there, that would be 534. That is AQST for Dano in the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tom o'brien has just published his 1000th gold report it's amazing to think that Tom has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 20 years. To celebrate the 1,000th issue of Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, we've just launched a Tiger Dollar sale, which runs for two weeks only through July 4th weekend. We've doubled all the Tiger Dollar bonuses, where you can now get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. But that's not all. Inflation is here, and the price of the Gold Report is going up after July 4th. Right now, you can lock in the Gold Report at the current pricing of $97 a month for as long as you remain a subscriber. This deal won't come around again. Get your Tiger Dollars today and apply them to the Gold Report before the price goes up on July 5th. Tiger Dollars never expire, 
and are good for any TFNN newsletter or service as a great way to add savings. Head on over to the front page of TFNN.com for all the details and help us celebrate Tom O'Brien's 1,000th Gold Report. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Boy, Montreal looked really solid last night, didn't they? For those of you that are watching the uh, Stanley Cup games out there, it's amazing these teams, uh, just the uh, the accuracy, the speed of their passing. And, and interesting, in each of the games out there, you know, if, if you're watching, there are moments. Now, when I say moments, I'm referring to minutes or periods, oftentimes where one team just simply pulls it all together. And it's as if uh, nobody's going to stop them, but it's been shifting, and so just really great. Uh, I'll be I'll I'll be depressed when the Stanley Cup is over because I'm not sure what I'll start turning into and watching. Anyways, we're taking a look at ticker symbol B E S T. That's the second instrument for Dan in the uh, Tigers Den. And best, we love the patterns out here, Dano. If we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, it has a confirmed rose momentum indicator bottom. Uh, so that's nice. If we take a look at the weekly chart, it has that same pattern, a confirmed rose momentum indicator bottom. Now, on the monthly chart, price has got to get up to resistance, which is around 221 to 250. The weekly chart, price right now is trading above resistance. That's the top of its uh, bearish, slightly bearish structured profile out there. So close above 153 this week, and really we have to say two consecutive closes Dan that would then say the target is 273 for the intermediate term time frame the daily also has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom and price is above the top of its daily profile that suggests price should target 186 a close above 186 in best on a daily basis as you have a change in trend out there so Dano I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, BEST out there best of luck to you on that uh, trade let's go to our next question this one coming in from Chris and Chris wants to take a look at POWW. So let's go ahead and get that fired up on our uh, eight panel time frame charts out here. And we'll read the question. I own shares of POWW, thinking of adding more on a pullback. Can you give me uh, a perspective on this instrument? If you have time, would you also look at SBSW? Absolutely. So POWW. Let's go see what that, uh, let me see what that actually is out here. That's on a different screen. I'm looking that up, and that is Ammo Inc. Okay. I probably have uh, purchased from P.O. In fact, I'm sure I have purchased from Ammo Inc. out here. In any event, uh, Ammo Inc. looks pretty darn good. It's above all profile levels. Let's go uh, check in. And, and I, I'm looking at my other screen. I, I forget sometimes I'm doing this here. And right now I'm just – the screen that's being shown to you has got the eight panels. I was looking at my black panel screen out there. So just know that price is above all profile levels. Okay, we got that done. You want to add on a, a position out here. The weekly chart says I go back. It wants to go back and test its highs. That's in the $10 area. We say that because price is above the top of the weekly profile in its oscillator and change line and only going to be bar number three on a weekly basis. Today should become bar number six on a daily time frame. So if this is going to get you a short-term top, last time it was a TD9 count pattern and a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, both that went ahead and pulled back to the support support level of 530. Uh, so the support level right now is 595. But that would change if there's a new TD9 count. And that's really where I was going on the daily basis. So if there's going to be a top out here, Chris, that should take place. That should take place Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. When, oh wait, when, today is six, seven, eight. So that would be either Friday through Tuesday of next week out there. And in the pullback or the place where you would add to your position, more likely than not, we'd have to take a look at the pattern would be the oscillator and change line. Right now in Vegas, that's a 777 actually on Stevie's screen. That is 777. So we know that will change, but that gives you a target area. Now the question is, and so is price going to continue to move up? Well, the answer to that, if you take a 195 minute time frame chart, I know some of you might say 195 minutes. How in the Sam Heck, Steve-O, did you come up with that? Pretty simple. You take 390 minutes because we're looking at a cash instrument. We're not looking at a future contract or a uh, currency pair or something along those lines. Instead, what we're just looking at is an instrument that trades between 930 and 4. 390 minutes divided by 2, you get 195. Why do we do that? When we take a look at bars, when I take a look at patterns, it is really critical that each of those have the exact same time frame. I don't want to look at, uh, so, so for example, 120-minute chart, hey, use that on a futures contract, no problem out there. 
But with regard to a cash instrument, what you really should be using is 130. 130 times 3 gets you 390. That way you're looking at equally timed bars out here. So in this case, what I was going to say about the 195 minute time frame chart, and I'll just simply give you the price because this formed 889 count top on the last bar. And that says the high is 883. So if you see a close above 883, that tells you price is headed to the 995 level. Now, what I know you're asking about is you're looking for a pullback out here. Uh, I don't see any other signal why the 15 minutes is going to be in bar number nine. So there's the potential. But if price takes out that level, the 195 minute bar that we were talking about, we're not going to see a pullback anytime soon. Probably what happens is this goes on to make that TD nine count to the upside. And so basically, Chris, what I'm saying is, hey, let's go, let's reconvene on this next week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, to see what kind of patterns are present at that stage. So I hope that helps you out. And I know you had a second instrument, but right now we've got a caller on the line, and we've got call-ahead seatings. And so that is from Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Uh, great, Steve. Uh, I was calling because the day before yesterday, you mentioned that copper prices are moving up. And I was – I am anyway, we uh, talked about – FCS. Freeport Mac, but you recommended yep. Southern Co Copper, and so I bought, I did a spread on it. I did the 60-65s okay. for mid-July, and it cost me a buck ten and, uh, on SCCO, and I just wondered this, uh, how, how does that, does, you know, is that, is that a good position? It seems to be Excellent. right now. Sure, sure, absolutely. So, so uh, to uh, to refresh uh, our memory out here, uh, what Ron was calling about. I want to see if I have that set of charts still up on my screen. If I do, I'll pull it up. If not, I won't worry about it. Okay, I do, and let me just switch screens out here. So, when Ron had called, he was looking at copper, and notice that uh, copper may have uh, bottomed out there. And so, let me get this screen out. And he was calling about FCX. And what I suggested to him, I said, hey, no problem trading FCX, but you've got to be paying attention to the Australian dollar. So on this chart up here, the top screen is the Australian dollar. The bottom screen is Freeport MacMoran. You can see, again, when it, when this bottomed back in March, both of them bottomed at the same time. Uh, this did turn up over the last couple of days out here. But as you said, hey, you don't really track the Australian dollar. So what I did was I offered you an alternative, maybe something that was uh, a little cleaner and in U.S., and that was Southern Copper out there. So now let's come back and take a look at the Southern Copper chart. And in Southern Copper, what Price did has done so far today, it has gotten up and it has tested the top of its bearish structure daily profile. So that resistance level run is 637. And if price can close above that, that would then suggest that price should make a run for the uh, 68 area. 68 happens to be the uh, top of the or the bottom of the weekly profile. But there's also another level that price could be moving towards, and that's at $70.91. So let me pull over this chart here. This is the daily time frame, another daily chart out here. And the reason that we suggested Southern Copper, folks, for Ron was because it also had a nice TD9 count bottom in here. And what it's doing today, the nice thing that you see today is that price is above that oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line right now, Ron, is printing out at 62.86. And you want to see price close above that today. The reason is, is because if price rejects the top of a bear structure profile, closes back below a red oscillator and change line, even though you've got a TD9 count bottom, that could be signaling to us that price is going to go test the 59.52 level. So I would say as long as price stays above 62.71, uh, the trade looks pretty good. We're about to go to a hard break. Please hold on. I want to be able to make sure I answer any other questions that you've got about Southern Copper, SCCO. Steve Rhodes with Ron in Denver. We'll be back in just a few. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back up, folks. We're taking a look at Southern Copper. Ticker symbol here is SCCO with Ron in Denver. And, Ron, what I did uh, during the break is I just switched over to a different screen for you. Uh, and here we're going to take a look at copper side by side, in essence, with uh, Southern Copper out here. And so the left hand panel of the screen is the copper chart. This confirmed a buy the D point or a Gartley buy point. And it did that on the trading session of June 21st. You can see it made the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that A to B equals CD pattern just to clear things up. And then what I also want you to notice is after it completed that pattern, it then created a bullish structured profile out here. And that bullish structured profile, price closed above it yesterday, it's still above it today. That says that copper is going to go target the 4.39 level. Now, more likely than not, it's going to overshoot that and get into the descending trend line areas. The other thing that I want you to notice, if you just watch my cursor, if I put my cursor on the left-hand panel, you're going to see the cursor on Southern Copper chart. And so you'll see how well this flows, uh, uh, directly speaking, with copper. And so since copper says that it wants to move higher, even though Southern Copper itself has run into resistance top of that profile, this suggests to certainly stay with the trade. So the tops occurred at about the same day. They were off by a day or so. And if you take a look at the bottom, off by about uh, one to two days out there. So you can see the directional correlation. And uh, so what, uh, what questions, based upon that information, uh, does that uh, present to you that I can try to help answer? Well, that's good. Uh, I... I uh... Again, I did a spread at 60.65. I think if it moves above 63 on on part of, I did five of them. Maybe I'll buy back the 65 and sell the 70 against it to give it a little more room. Okay. 
Yeah, look, I, you know, this, if this thing, if this thing clears sixty three bucks, it's signaling to you and I that it should be heading sixty three seventy seven to be exact. That it should then target seventy ninety one. Okay. And the only other thing that you got to do. I appreciate that. At, I appreciate your recommendation, and uh, we'll see what yeah. happens. Thank you very yeah. much. You, you bet. Now, the other thing I would throw out there about this is Ron and everybody else is that we've got to be paying attention to copper. It's got that descending trend line, so we've got to watch that. Uh, in order for Southern Copper to be the right trade, price is going to have to take that out. You can see directionally speaking how these two are tied together. So that was Ron in Denver. Uh, let me see if we've got any other questions that have come in by uh, email. I don't think I've got anything inside the Tiger's Den, so let me just check here. Yeah, we've got one from Mimi. We've got a few, actually. And Mimi wants to take a look at uh, J.P. Morgan. So uh, let's get over here, take a look at JPM, and uh, just to speed things along, I'm going to have to switch to a different set of charts out here. I uh, won't be able to do that uh, full kit and caboodle like we did on the other ones, but that's okay. We're going to give Mimi uh, all the information that she wants. So the question is, is this oversold? Please suggest a buy point out here. So is it oversold? Uh, instead, I want to take a look at the actual patterns out here. Uh, in the pattern on JP Morgan, so I'm going to pull up the daily time frame. We're going to look at the white background chart. And the answer is this formed a TD9 count bottom. It did it at its lows. So whether it's oversold or not, uh, that, that I don't know. But what I do know is it did form a nice bottom. And that bottom came in on the trading day of June 18th. That was a bar following bar number nine. Now, since then, Mimi, a new profile has formed. And at the same time that that was happening, the oscillator and change line changed from green to red. When that happens, we typically see price and that line catch up to each other. doesn't tell us how. It could be a sideways movement in price while the oscillator and change line moves down. It could be an upward movement in price. So there's many different combinations. But what it's not a signal of is price headed lower, at least at this stage here. And uh, so right now with that bottom, it does look like price, J.P. Morgan, should go target the top of its daily profile, 152.86. And more likely, it's going to go meet up with that oscillator and change line. So you're suggesting you ask me about a buy point. The buy point was going to be either on June 18th or the following day on June 21st out there after the TD9 count. So now the buy point would be uh, some type of retracement. And if I pull up a 30-minute time frame chart right now and look for its signals and patterns out here, I don't have any signal of a top yet, but it is in bar number 7. Bar number 7 should complete at 2 p.m. So that says that there could be a TD9 count top that takes place by the end of the day and then pulls back. But the pullback area would be somewhere around 150, 58, 150, 11 out there. Uh, but I think at this stage here, you want to wait to let this pattern try to form. See what kind of retracement you get. And then if you want to take a, a long trade, uh, go ahead. Remember that oscillator and change line is red. A test and rejection of that level and a turn down says, hey, I'm going to go back and retest support out there. We don't know that that's going to be the signal, but you were asking for the buy point. That came in on a daily basis a couple days ago, and that's using the TD9 system out there. So, Mimi, I hope that helps you out with regard to J.P. Morgan. Thanks so much for writing in. The next question coming in from, from Eddie. Eddie, Eddie, you always use that small font. These are Stevie eyes. <laughs> That's okay. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to expand it. God, I got to figure out how to use my phone. There we go. Okay, Steve, can you look at NTNX? Absolutely. So let's get that NTNX out here. You are. You look at NTNX. You're in at 26. Oh, you also, you want to take a look at NVIDIA. So let's take a look at NTNX. NTNX, this is for Eddie uh, from uh, Boca. And Eddie, uh, you like uh, yesterday's action because it took price above the top of the daily profile. It's well above the top of the weekly profile. It's now above the top of the monthly profile. So from a profile standpoint, uh, this is uh, doing everything that you want. Now, today's move higher has simply just triggered a road momentum indicator signal. Doesn't mean that you've got a top, just means caution, that's all. It means that if you see a bearish reversal candle, that could be signaling at least some type of top, short term or otherwise. Do we have that right now? We do not, so this looks good. This says stay with the trade. The weekly time frame, you are going to form bar number eight. It also could be uh, seven, a seventh wave move, but the earliest that could be confirmed would be next week. This says, so the caution sign here, ready is you've got a TD9 count pattern that could be formed on a weekly basis as price got up to TD9 breakdown resistance. That's at 40.10. Stay with the trade right now. Look at a short-term time frame chart. And if price this week close above 40.10, that's a beautiful thing. You should see higher highs next week, maybe the week after. But you've got to be careful about that TD9 count on the weekly time frame.
Monthly, again, looks very good. Nothing out here. Price above the top of that profile. No topping signal or anything along those lines. 30-minute basis. I don't have anything on a 30-minute chart uh, for you to be concerned about at this stage here. So, uh, yeah, stay with the uh, trade. Your next question was on NVIDIA, NVDA. So let's get that up here on the uh, screen. This will take just a moment to populate. And I have not already discussed it. Uh, so I just think you want me to take a look at it. So when we take a look at NVIDIA, no topping signal unless we see a move above its bearish shootings. Now, actually, this does have a topping pattern. This has a sell the D point, even though I can't draw it in with this uh, set of charts. Or what I can do is I can draw in at least a, a line. Well, wait a minute here, Steve. -O. I think I can. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going to draw the A to B equals CD, there's your A to B level. And I could just take this over. And here would be your C to D level. And we can see that price has made that. And then you get the shooting star candle that formed on June 18th. So that's your real resistance level, Eddie. And if price can take out that high, 775, it should be off to the races. Now, even though this has a topping pattern, price has not been able to take out the oscillator and change line. So therefore, the signal is bullish to neutral. Can't really call it bearish because price isn't below any level of support out there. Uh, so NVIDIA, if I look at the 30-minute time frame chart out here, is there anything to be worried about? The answer is uh, no. So with regard to NVIDIA, stay with that trade as uh, well. And Eddie, thanks so much for writing in and have a, a great afternoon. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com.
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the Dow's off uh, five points. S&P's up five. NASDAQ up 19. Russell is up 18. Let's go check in on the uh, Russell 2000 via the equity future contract. Just to give you an idea of where price is uh, headed to, very likely the very top of its daily profile. New profile that formed yesterday. 2332 is the print. Now we say that because price is above yesterday's high, above the center of that profile. And that would suggest to you and I that price should go hit that 2332 mark. The Dow... The Dow also forming a new profile. It is bullish in structure, and so price should make its way to 34.026. No new profiles in the NQ. Maybe those form overnight. But right now, as we talked about, it's made the 1 to 1A to B equals CD. It's done that with only a 36% retracement on that B to C lug. That suggests that it should go target 14.545. You are at the 14.279 level right now. The ES Mini. Uh, has not been able to take out the top of its daily profile. It still has a topping pattern. By the way, the Dow has a topping pattern, as does the Russell. So even though they're moving higher, they have not taken out those topping signals. And therefore, if those topping signals don't get taken out, and what the markets are really waiting for is the NDX 100 to generate its topping signal, then right now the topping signal that we'd be watching for is a sell the D point. And the sell the D point would generate if we see a bearish reversal candle. We don't have that. Right now you've got basically a doji candle. Uh, price is trading just about where it had opened out there. Doji candle is not a reversal candle out here. Uh, so, But that's something that you want to be watching for. Uh, right now, again, the Russell looks like it wants to go ahead and make that move higher. I look at the New York Stock Exchange. It went from that extreme oversold condition. That's when you get down to the minus 150 level. It actually got down to a close of minus 170. It's working that level off. It is nearing the zero threshold level. If it can close above zero threshold today and then tomorrow, then it's telling you New York Stock Exchange has found its bullish legs once again. We don't have that message just yet. We're waiting to see what message it sends to us. Um, so watch that as well. Folks, stay tuned for two more great hours. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next, the Power Trading Hour. Tom O'Brien to take us on home. I'll be back with you on uh, Thirsty Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday, folks.